Let us now look into another material that is polymers and their usage in construction. In the first lecture of this module 12 which deals with the polymers in construction, we shall be concentrating ourselves uh, on to basics of what is polymer at and so on and where in civil engineering they are used, in construction they are used and then in the next one more uh, lecture we will look into specific usage. Right. So, that is what it is. So, therefore, general outline of this lecture is we have we will discuss first some basics looks into the structure of polymeric material then types life cycle uses in civil engineering and just I will try to introduce about polymer concrete composite one of them is polymer concrete the other ones of course we will discuss in the next lecture. So, let us say what is let us see the definition what is polymer what do you understand by polymer. Now, you know very interestingly carbon has got a peculiar property uh, and silicon has it somewhat as you know you know carbon can bond with the carbon atom and you can make as long chain as possible and uh, that gives rise to polymeric material. Uh, in fact, in nature very large number of materials are polymer the human body, the tree you know tree uh, timber as we shall see the tree basically uh, it is cellulose fiber in lignin. Now, the cellulose is nothing but a long chain polymer. So, in nature there are polymers the human bone is uh, has got a polymeric structures and so on. So, every you know the large uh, uh, amount of material uh, used by the nature or evolved in the nature are polymeric. Now, how do you define it? A polymer is a material, a polymer is a material composed of macromolecules with a structure characterized by a large reputation of groups of atoms. So, you have groups of atoms which are repeated large number of time, which are repeated large number of time, right, which are repeated large number of time in the structure of the material and forms a macromolecule and that is what we call as polymer. The groups of atom are called structural units, repeat units or monomeric units or constitutional units. So, this all names are used in very many literature. The groups of atoms are called structural units, sometimes they are called repeat units, monomeric units or constitutional units. I am sure some of you must have or most of you would have studied this something in basic school chemistry but this since we are starting this in its usage in civil engineering we are repeating some of them right ok. These macromolecules have large molecular weight it can be understandable because it is repetition of some smaller molecules repetition of some smaller molecules for example, polyethylene or uh, polypropylene. Now, you have propylene which is repeated very large number of times to get polypropylene and you can repeat the repetition the amount of repetition can vary. So, molecular weight would depend upon how many times this is repeated right. So, that is what it is uh, basically has got large molecular weight. So, this material will have large molecular weight right. The macromolecular chains are composed of array of large number of monomeric units linked together by covalent bond. Now, the covalent bond is uh, uh, between the carbon and carbon and therefore, they are quite strong the chain are quite strong you know this is strong in relative terms because we have seen uh, things like van der Waal bond in case of cements which are basically not as strong as the chemical bonds they are physical bonds and uh, cement uh, bonds actually aggregate system through such physical bonds by and large and uh, uh, um, in case of metals we have seen metallic bonds which are even stronger and uh, then we also talked about uh, uh, you know electrovalent uh, bond between chemicals I mean ions, 
but then we had nothing to do with such material as such because the strength does not come from such salts or similar things. But now here we are looking at different kind of bond that is covalent bond that exists between the carbon, carbon atoms and therefore it can be quite strong. The macromolecular weight is a, it is heterogeneous, it may not be same throughout the weight, the molecular weight, macromolecular weight because you have large number of molecules, repeating monomeric units or repeat units which have gone to form the macromolecule. So, molecular weight would be relatively large that is what we have seen, but in the whole material the molecular weight may not be same. Some places you may have higher molecular weight whereas in some other places you may have lower molecular weight. So, that is what it is, it is heterogeneous not same, it may not be, it may not be same and it is heterogeneous and it would de de depend upon how many repetitions you have, what we call degree of polymerization. So, mo this is heterogeneous number one and molecular weight plus its distribution have a significant influence of the properties. Because we know uh, the, the various physical properties depends on molecular weight. A heavy molecules generally tends to be solids in normal temperature and lighter ones tends to be um, fluid of some form, very light ones even maybe in gaseous form. So, molecular weight dictates lot of properties and the heterogeneity or its distribution also have significant influence on properties. Right. Continuing with this, now this heterogeneity can be defined in terms of what is called polydispersity index and this can vary from 30 to 50, right. One issue is uh, degree of polymerization. So, how many times does it repeat, right and uh, polydispersity, polydispersity index measures the heterogeneity of the molecular weight and it can be you know as high as 30. Let us see how does it look, let us see how does it look. If we look at the how do we define this polydispersity index i is defined i you know this is i i we define by this equation by two different molecular weights. This m n is nothing but the average molecular weights where n stands for you know n stands for number of I mean uh, sigma n i sigma n i this stands for actually the degree of polymerization this stands for degree of polymerization that is total number of repetitions present out of which n i you know for or let us say n 1 is the number of molecules having molecular weight m 1. n 1 is the number of molecules having molecular weight m 1. So, n 1 m 1 plus n 2 m 2 etcetera etcetera when you sum them up and divide by the total number of n 1 plus n 2 etcetera total number of repetitions what you get is an average molecular weight. So, this is purely an average molecular weight, this is purely an average molecular weight right and this you can see is a molecular weight kind of weighted average. So, what we have done we have multiplied this by m i again. So, n i m i square divided by n i m i. So, what, what sum this will give? This will give you the total you know molecular total weights of number like n 1 is the number of repetition with m 1 molecular weight. So, when you sum total up you get the total weights and this each multiplied by the molecular weight. So, n 1 n i m i square now this tells us this is a weighted average sort of and this divided by m n divided m p divided by m n is the polydispersity index polydispersity index right polydispersity index and this can be as high as 30 or 50. Now, in case of if it is all uniform if it was all uniform then this value would have been simply 1 because this you know this this multiplied by m with this actually will you would have got average m p and m n same if you would have if you would have uh, had you know it is all uniform same value m i like 
everywhere the number of m, m you know this this is sim simply a constant so, and then you can take it outside the summation sign state here also you can take it outside the summation sign and you would be left with simply m average or single m here and this would have been also same m and this ratio would have been 1 if it was all uniform but this therefore is a measure of how much dispersion is available or poly dispersity index in case of polymers and uh, this can vary as high as 30 or 50. Let us see what is the macromolecular structure, right? What is the structure of the macromolecule? We have seen the structure of course uh, other materials as such and this have uh, what is called uh, the three varieties uh, of uh, you know monomeric units, how monomeric units are connected. For example, in linear this will have C, C, C all connected in linear manner in this one. So, these are called linear sequence of monomeric units, they will be linear, linear structure. It can be branched for example, something coming out like this branch and these are third variety is called cross link structure where you have this chains they might be in three dimension. For example, in two dimension this is in one dimension, one level, this is another level. So, you have completely cross linked structure that means you have got a three dimensional structure. So, linear molecules are made up of individual chains, they are made up of individual chains and their cohesion is due to bond between the bond in the chain itself. So, in the, in the chain itself there will be cohesion because if you try to pull them the covalent bond will be opposing such uh, if you want to break it then you have to uh, exert force to break that particular covalent bond plus there are secondary bonds those are uh, van der Waals kind between the chains. So, there are secondary bonds between physical bonds between them, but the main thing cohesion due to the bond in chain, chain bond in the chain itself and secondary bonds. So, there are linear structures molecules all C's atoms are arranged in linear manner. What about this branch same one, but small branching in cross link molecules they have 3 D structure as I said, because this is one dimension this is in plane, this is in another plane and they are cross linked like this. So, cross linked molecules have 3 D structure and cohesion is due to covalent bond between this and between this. So, everywhere you have got covalent bond and obviously, you can understand that this would have a much higher uh, cohesion existing, right? Because uh, supposing this one uh, uh, tries to remove this, even the other plane the, the uh, uh, molecules in the other planes will be opposing such uh, movement simply through this kind of cross linking cross linking bond. So, that is what it is right. There can be another kind depending upon the this was depending upon the structure of the chain and the other kind could be depending upon whether we have similar type of molecule or different type of dissimilar type of molecule. For example, these are called homopolymers which have got all one type of molecule repeated several type, one type of monomer repeated several times. And if you have more than one, then we call it copolymer. For example, A, A, A are A is uh, uh, one type of monomer, B is another type of monomer and they are polymerized to give you copolymer. Now, this copolymer can be of three, four types, for example, statistical. In this case, they are all random A, 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 B, B, A, B, B. So, they are linked in a random manner, whereas in this one it is alternating A, B, A, B, A, B, etcetera. Here it is a block form where A, 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 then B, B, B all together, and this is called graft where A this is linked to B, B, B. So, the structures could be you know structures could be uh, different and in this one we say constitutional units are identical. So, in case of homopolymer you have constitutional units identical, in case of copolymer we have different constitutional units and they can be again arranged in different manner statistical alternating block or graft. So, that is how the macromolecular structure that is how the macromolecular structure looks like that is how the macromolecular structure looks like right. Okay. So, let us look into something different. 
Now, you see, when we said we had linear polymer, which means that uh, if you uh, apply uh, stresses onto them, or let's say the heat onto them, some energy, then this chain, the chains can be separated easily, and individual molecule can be separated. So, in this one linear structure, when you have linear structure, it is possible to possible to individualize the macromolecule relatively easily, because through say supply of heat or similar sort of uh, solvent can easily individualize the mole macromolecule, because they are the bonds are only along the one direction, they are long chain. So, you go to break it and therefore, it is possible to individualize relatively easily. So, this can take place by you know heating and in that case what results in is softening and then it fuses. So, this is possible in this case soluble through solubility it is possible to separate them and this sort of behavior we call it actually linear structure ones can be softened with heat and these are ill thermoplastics. So, this we call as thermoplastics. So, thermoplastics are ones which can be individualized very easily which can be individualized very easily right uh, you know this can be individualized very easily uh, through heat or even through solvent and it is possible to individualize them and you get what is called thermoplastic behavior that means they will soften as you heat it up right so these materials are called thermoplastic so they have thermoplastic behavior that means if you heat it up they softens up and uh, possibly possible to remold them back to the shape that you want, possible to remold them back to the shape you want and therefore, they are called thermoplastics, they are called thermoplastics. We have a number of them used in construction as we shall see. As opposed to this, the cross link structure, the cross link structure you know, if you see that in that case the sliding of the chains are not possible one over another and they are cross linked. So, very easily you cannot break because there will be opposition from the cross linked bond. So, there it is not easily you cannot separate the separate the uh, or individualize the uh, molecule so easily. So, you cannot separate them easily therefore, it is not possible to individualize in this particular case and they remain tangled macromolecules with topological obstacles that means in three dimensional there will be obstacles and therefore, fusion is not possible, solubilization is almost impossible and this we call thermogrid behavior, this we call thermogrid behavior and these materials are called thermosets, thermogrid, thermohard or thermohardened materials etcetera. So, these materials are called thermosets, thermorigid, thermohard, thermohardened materials etcetera. Because it is not possible to, possible to individualize them you by supplying heat, but remember that if I supply heat of course, they can get decomposed at certain temperature or certain when certain amount of heat is supplied, but you can't break this molecule they got completely decomposed um, you know structure might be totally disturbed, but it is unlikely that you will be able to soften them. So, that is not possible you can obviously can if in presence of oxygen some of them can simply burn forming carbon dioxide and things like that, but it is not possible to soften them and remold them. So, it is not possible to soften and remold them. I mean when it breaks the cross link breaks then it is decomposed. It is no longer again it not a reversible situation like the cross uh, you know linear structure. So, these are thermoplastics. Cross linked molecules have 3 D structures that we have seen they have 3 D structures and cannot be softened with heat and they are called thermosets and thermo rigid, thermo hard or thermo hardened materials etcetera. So, these are two one of the ways of classifying the polymeric materials, but there are there is uh, so you know there are the two types of polymers are there. A third type of polymer is known as elastomers and we have usage of all of them in civil engineering. Uh, thermos plastics and thermosets we shall discuss detail them in detail sometime later on and elastomers you must have heard of them because most of the bridge bearings, bearings in the bridge structure, bearing of the uh, deck system over the pier is usually elastomerics. So, elastomers are nothing but polymers which are elastic, exhibit elastic recovery under low strains like rubber. 
So, these are elastomers. Elastomers are polymers which are elastic and exhibit elastic recovery under low strain. So, these are elastomer. If you have unsaturated compound, unsaturated monomers, right, uh, unsaturated compounds, let us say uh, after the macro in the macromolecule has formed, if you have large number of unsaturated compound, what does it mean? You have got double bond, you know, carbon can have. Uh, double bonds and triple bonds. For example, in um, ethylene you have got double bond, acetylene you have triple bond that you must be remembering. So, C to C triple bond and that is unsaturated. That means, such bonds can be broken up easily, relatively more easily than the first bond that is a single bond itself. So, such unsaturated compounds means they have got double bond or uh, triple bond. Right. So, supposing I have got free double bond, large, large number of free, so unsaturated compounds are one which will have double bond or triple bond. Supposing I have macromolecule which is unsaturated and it has got large number of free double bond after formation of the linear macromolecule. Now, by some application of some third reagent, I can actually do some bridging of those linear chains by breaking the double bonds or triple bonds by breaking the double bonds or triple bonds right or i can do this by further limited polymerizations since there are unsaturated there are double bonds they can be easily broken and they may be now some sort of cross linking becomes or partial cross linking may become possible so this is what one can do and this reaction is known as vulcanization and the material behaves like rubber that means, if you give some small uh, it under low strain, it behaves elastically, it can recover very easily. So, this is what is this material. So, that means, it is partially cross linked rather than completely being linear or completely cross linked. This is somewhere in between. So, this material is somewhere in between and that we call as elastomers. There is another terminology sometimes will come because uh, we will come across uh, not only in bridge bearing, but you must be hearing uh, sometime when we discuss about polymer modified concrete. Uh, this is a concrete or very much used in repair work. Uh, they are also called latex modified concrete. So, latex is nothing, they are ultra fine emulsion materials and after coagulation the materials behave like rubber. So, this latex is are nothing but they are ultra fine emulsions, very fine, fine powdery like things and they form I mean in emulsion and once co coagulated they behave like rubber, once coagulated they behave like rubber, right. So, they behave like rubber. So, these are elastomers, synthetic behave, rubber behaves like rubber at ordinary temperature, but on heating agglomerate loosens and behaves like thermoplastics. Now, first of all, we have natural rubbers and synthetic rubbers. We have natural rubbers and synthetic rubbers. Natural rubber comes from tree and been used for many, many years, many, many years before industrialization. Now, uh, the synthetic rubbers, uh, butadiene and isoprene, they were developed later when uses of rubber became very, very popular, right. Now, these synthetic rubbers or the materials which are made into synthetic rubbers, they behave almost like rubber at ordinary temperature because they have the same sort of thing partially cross linked structure. But on heating, this agglomerate loosens and behaves like thermoplastics. On heating, the agglomerate behaves loosens and behaves like thermoplastics. That is because the kind of bond that exists in this structure is different than the natural uh, cross linking structure that exists between. Uh, the, the you know different chains, uh, partial cross linking you know uh, the, the bond that exists is different than the natural rubber. So, they behave like what is thermoplastics at high temperature, right. So, this we call as thermoplastic elastomers, this we call as thermoplastic elastomers. Now, this diagram will make it clear somewhat because synthetic rubber is what is most commonly used today. Like this is uh, this is the case with uh, styrene. This is the yeah uh, styrene styrene uh, butadiene rubber SBR system actually. So this place it is 
if you can see this, this is a chain, these chains are there, partial cross links, linkings are there and this is in solid state you get elastomeric behavior. Then as you increase the temperature, as you increase the temperature at some point they actually get, there is a fusion zone, fusion zone and uh, then they become, comes into the fluid state when they are all individual chains, all individual chains. Okay. And Okay, they are entangled with each other at the solid state and therefore they behave like rubber, they behave like rubber and then when you increase at high temperature, these chains are separated out and uh, resulting in formation of almost behavior like thermoplastics. So, they will go to fluid state and that is what it is. So, therefore, they are thermoplastic elastomers, we call them thermoplastic elastomers, we call them thermoplastic elastomers. So, what we have seen is there are three classes of what we have seen uh, is there are three classes of uh, mm, three classes of polymers that is thermoplastics, elastomers and thermosets and all are used in construction, all are used in construction, all are used in construction. Let us see how they are used, where they are used, right. Let us see how and where they are used, okay. So, thermoplastics, you know, these are the polymer families in question that is thermoplastic, these are the elastomers and thermosets. PVC is a thermoplastic. So, so far we have defined these classes and now we are talking about them. PVC is a thermoplastics, right. Then polyethylene and polypropylenes. PVC pipes are very common. We have, uh, we know about them. PVC pipes used in um, uh, uh, wastewater pipes in buildings and many other usage. Actually, they are very common. Polyethylene and polypropylene, low density polyethylene, high density polyethylene and polypropylene, varieties of uses of them are there. In fact, they are used the fibers, these fibers can be used to reinforce concrete or plaster is to avoid cracks, there are some example. Polystyrenes, polyamides, linear polymethyl methacrylate, acrylic and vinyl derivatives. Some of those examples you will come across when you talk about uh, talk about specific uh, uh, usage like uh, adhesion and so, so on and so forth. So, when we look into the specific uses, some of those will come across. Synthetic rubber and thermoplastic elastomers, butyl rubbers, this is very much in use. Uh, this is used in sealant, butyl rubber solutions. Then polychlorophene, neoprene rubbers, bridge bearings, styrene butadiene rubber system, taurine, styrene butadiene styrene styrene, isoprene, styrene, etc. So, there are several, this rubbers, they are used uh, as I told you also in polymer modified concrete system, rubber latexes are used. They are used uh, sealants, some of them are used in sealants, some of them are used in, of course, bridge bearing is of course of, uh, you know, of this kind of elastomeric material. Then polyisoprene silicones, they are used, vulcanized rubbers, they are used for certain usage. Uh, in fact, silicones are used for waterproofing purposes as we shall see sometime. And thermosets resins like epoxy resins, they are used in repair works very much. Methyl methacrylate resin derivatives, unsaturated polyester and vinyl ester resins. So, we will see their specific uses later on. They are used for various, some of them used for very much, I mean very much commonly used for repair works and the polyurethanes of course is the other which belongs to everything. So, usage of these materials in civil engineering we just saw, looked into it. So, these are the classes and where they are used. Now, let us just look at something else uh, from the basics. You see small molecules are usually, uh, small molecules can form crystals crystalline, they are crystalline, small molecules. Large molecules usually are not crystalline. Thus, you do not see crystalline, totally crystalline polymer which would be an exception. 
but polymers can be semi crystalline polymers can be semi crystalline okay but more importantly amorphous polymer with high molecular weight they are more common and uh, you have they can have molecular you know with, with high molecular weight if there are number of chains they can be entanglement of chains which maintains the cohesion and prevents direct phase transformation and results in transitory double like state. Now, what happens when a number of chains right and they are entangled. So, when you are heating them, heating them out when you are heating first of all the chain themselves since they are entangled there will be secondary forces secondary bond through this entanglement. So, if you are trying to separate out the chains completely this will not be possible some of them might be separated some others may not be. So, they do not have sharp melting point what happens is they have there is no you know it prevents direct phase transformation. So, solid to liquid straight away it is not there there is something intermediate happens and there is a transitory rubber like state exists transitory rubber like state exists. So, in this case of polymer amorphous polymer this behavior is seen generally in linear chains and the temperature at which actually it shows softening starts we call it glass transition temperature. So, glass transition temperature it marks the transition between rigid and rubber like state. So, it is in rigid solid state to the rubber like state and then liquid state is reached much later. So, this is important because after glass transition temperature its utility as structural material or you know its utility totally changes its performance would completely change once it has reached that glass transition temperature. This diagram will make it clear see in this diagram what we are showing is on this axis I have got molecular weight on this axis I have got temperature. So, as my molecular weight is less it is all crystalline sort of and possibly from solid state right this is solid state to viscous liquid state state jump is there. But when I increase the molecular weight there is no straight jump rather there is a transitory rubber like state. So, if I look at this point from viscous solid to you know in between point where it just starts becoming rubber state this temperature I call it glass transition temperature. So, in higher molecular weight this is what we see and higher and higher the molecular weight this gap tends to increase. Now, this further on further raising the temperature here it will become viscous liquid. So, this is called glass transition temperature however, the utility as solid finishes here because now it has become something like softened rubber like state. So, this is glass transition temperature and other aspects of behavior of the polymeric material. Well, very important uh, now, now let us. So, we have looked into some of the fundamentals of uh, the polymeric material. Now, let us look into some of their utilities uh, towards uh, use in buildings or in construction. Now, most important aspect of their behavior is a behavior against fire because we know these materials are, are all actually carbonaceous materials. So, they can constitute what is called fire load which you have mentioned earlier you know fire load uh, they will all constitute actually fire load many of them not all and their temperature sustenance is also not very high because it would depend upon that uh, chain long chain molecules amorphous molecules it will depend upon their glass transition temperature which may not be very high. For some of those cross link structure their uh, decomposition temperature also is not very high not of the order of 100 I mean 1000 or 1200 degree centigrade the 100 or 150 200 I mean 150 200 or similar of those order. So, therefore, their fire sustenance is not very you know it's they, they are not very they are susceptible to fire in that sense. But uh, important point is that uh, although you know you can design polymer or even fire retardant, retardant coatings are also polymeric in nature. So, most of the polymers they are susceptible to fire, but fire retardant coatings are also polymeric in nature. Uh, you must must have heard of what is called Teflon. Now, Teflon coating is used in uh, you know uh, frying pans 
non-stick pans. Now there the temperature, it can withstand very high temperature. So again that is nothing but poly tetrafluoroethylene PTFE. So that is again is a polymer. So therefore you know having said that polymers are susceptible to fire not necessarily because that is a very very versatile material while some of them cannot sustain more than maybe 200 to 50 degree centigrade but many others can sustain much higher temperature as well. But commonly used uh, polymeric material commonly used polymeric material you see one issue is we did not um, we are not at the moment we are not interested in their flame retardant properties or uh, or or uh, uh, their fire load because uh, but one must keep in mind the one important issue related to fire is that the smoke fatality in case of fatality in case of uh, fire is mostly because of the smoke quite often if the cyanide gases are there one may one you know one coming in contact with such gases produced during fire let us say from fire load then it can result in temporary loss of memory temporary inaction of the brain and one may just remain there may not be able to escape from fire. So smokes are more dangerous in case of fire because fatalities results because more because of smoke from suffocation or temporary uh, inaction because the brain is not being active toxic material. So the smoke behavior that is what we are looking in this case you know depending upon type of uh, uh, type of uh, type of uh, material for example if it is polyethylene if it is polyethylene if it is polyethylene this is PE its molecular unit is given and what you get is a light white smoke and produced are carbon monoxide carbon dioxide and water and few hydrocarbons. Now look at this I will come to the in between ones polyurethane for example foam which is used as insulation in building materials quite often can be used as insulation material polyurethane in many other structures used as insulation foam. Now this one has got this group NH group and light white smoke but you can have HCN production. So this is important issue related to fire besides their susceptibility besides the one that one is using susceptibility to high temperature because stability against high temperature this is also important maybe charring properties those are also important related to fire okay. Then polyester saturated or unsaturated polyesters or vinyl esters you know this is the group black smoke mostly carbon dioxide carbon monoxide and water and few hydrocarbons. Now come to polyamides you know which has got again this nitrogen in a, in a amide group and it can produce again hydrogen cyanide. So the quality of the smoke is important so while one is using them the one must be knowing about this. Similarly PVC can generate hydrochloric acid and others mostly generates polystyrene, polypropylene etc. most of them generates or phenolic most of them generates actually carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide and water. And color of the smokes are most of them are white but this is black smoke from polyester then this is black smokes from polyvalent chloride and heavy black, black smoke come from polystyrene. So this one must be aware of this besides their temperature sustenance in case of fire. With specific materials whenever we are coming in con coming across in our discussion uh, in, in subsequent discussion we will discuss about their susceptibility to, to heat and things like that as and when required right okay. Another important issue is the life cycle another important issue is the life cycle. Now life cycle of polymeric material you see these are materials quite a bit or can be sustainable if you are using if sustainable means you know is if you are able to recycle them properly. So life cycle of uh, and life cycle of this materials are important also important are their aging also important are their aging you know uh, degradation with time although degradation with the time uh, I am not discussing in details but I just thought that I will talk about the life cycle somewhat for example uh, collection of the raw material you start from here collection of the raw material then you prepare the product transformation into object right for example this preparation of the product means uh, let us say styrene butyrene rubber system and you have used in concrete 
so you got polymer modified concrete here okay or maybe the product uh, this may not be marketed this might be used straight away before that maybe the system itself is marketed and then use of this object in okay in, in let us say concrete making then end of the life of object now this life comes when it has degraded fully because we have seen also in case in the context of concrete that uh, they you know they, they tend to degrade or react now in case of polymeric material the degradation may be initiated by simply radiation ultraviolet radiation or the solar radiation also by heat temperature rise or um, humidity or several other factors so as the degrade with time as the degrade with time as the degrade with time a time will come when it will not be functionally capable of doing its function doing it for serving its purpose right when it will its functional utility will be lost as defined by the usage so that time it has actually attained its you know it's, it's reached its end of its life so once it has reached end of its life once it has reached end of its life then selective collection is to be done selective collection is to be done right part of it will be finally disposed part of it will be finally disposed right selective collection is to be done finally it will be disposed some from some energy can be recovered because you have produced them with expense of energy from some of them you can recover the energy and then part of it can be recycled or put into some other uses recycled and put into other usage and then a part of it can go to as a raw material for producing the new material itself for producing new material itself so that's the life cycle and this life cycle of the polymeric polymeric materials are important from sustainability like life cycle of other materials are important for sustainability right okay let's see what are the uses in civil engineering right use of this polymers in civil engineering let us see now first main field where good lot of it is being used is geotechnology or geotechnical engineering in other words environmental below grade structure below ground or environment below ground or you know in geotechnical engineering geomembranes and waterproofing system this is very common you know geotextiles is a special class of uh, materials being used and uh, they are used for sealing geomembrane and waterproofing system and what we use there PVC polyvinyl chloride high density uh, polyester low density polyester chlorinated polyester modified bitumens with polymers they are used in also uh, road styrene butadiene styrene styrene isoprene styrene rubber system EVA etc etc elastomers various kind of elastomers so in geotechnical engineering one is the geomembranes etc and waterproofing system all these varieties of polymers are used in geotechnical engineering further for reinforcing the earth separation of filtration drainage geotextiles and related related field there's a other big field where it is being used we use polyesters polypropylene and polyamides polypropylene and polyamides uh, then also in ultralight structures for backfills and rainwater discharge we use polypropylene pvc etc now uh, in case of transport of fluid pipes we use pvc high density polyester for gases so this is the uses in geotechnical engineering and today it is this this you know geotech i mean reinforcing earth or construction of embankments and uh, uh, construction of uh, let us say uh, various kind of uh, uh, embankments of varieties of form say flyover approach approach to flyover or you know so where you do not have space you actually use reinforced earth to support this is support is tell in itself instead of huge retaining wall of, retaining wall of say masonry or concrete RCC was most commonly used but now reinforced earth has reduced this only you have just a lining solid RCC lining is there at the end but reinforced earth construction is used very much in uh, approaches of flyovers or many other places there are n number of places 
So, a huge use of use of polymeric material in geotechnology is there. However, this will not be part of our discussion because this forms part of you know as there can be special course on this and so we will not discuss this, we will not part of the building materials or construction, but this is a very large and important subject and important use of polymer, polymeric material. A second important usage of polymeric material is in roads for purpose of surfacing because bitumen you know bitumen again is an organic polymeric material. So, special mixes surface coating etcetera for roads and uh, modified bitumens with polymers etcetera. So, this is polymer you know, modifier for modifier for bitumen system this is very common and uh, this is uh, this is this is where the it is used in roads. Then noise abutment walls, panel post and various road equipments use polycarbonates, methyl, 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 polymethyl, methacrylate uh, resins and then glass fiber reinforced unsaturated polyester composite. So, in roads they have got a lot of use. Again this one we will not be discussing much because it would be forming possibly part of any pavement course. The earlier one will form part of any geotechnical course. What we are looking at is building materials and construction. So, these two would keep out although they are large use in civil engineering. Where we will concentrate ourselves of course is uses in structures above ground and uh, it has got huge use there as well. For example, in some sort of reinforcement, fiber reinforcement, of course conventional reinforcement I have mentioned this reinforcing RCC, it, the composites polymer composites has not been a successful material. But fiber reinforcement polyester polypropylene fibers for crack arrestation purposes of mortar shrinkage crack arrestation this has been very much in use. Then repairing structures great uh, amount of uh, repair is being done with polymeric material uh, that is uh, for many very advantageous uh, reasons for you know because they have got they are in an advantageous position in terms of high strength or required strength, low curing time and better durability. We will discuss some of them in details. Then gluing adhesive in structures, structural gluing, waterproofing of varieties of kind particularly damp, damp proof membrane. So, there their uses are again very much there. And the type of material that used is epoxy resins. I mentioned to you sometime earlier. Carbon fiber reinforced epoxy system, epoxy composite, these are special used. You can have complete structural system, roofing system made of polymer composites, not very popular in Indian situation because they are not very cheap. But thin structures, thin structures uh, can be made of polymer composites. Polyurethane waterproofing systems. So, the waterproofing system repair and complete structural system there is a large use some of them we will look into. Protection of structure by paint and plastic coating both for steel mainly for steel and similar sort of metallic ones, but can also be used in case of concrete in very very aggressive environment because epoxy coating is or similar other coatings you know. Uh, are, are very much very much in use in very very uh, highly aggressive environment. So, I can I can give you an example anyway let us just see what are the materials they are used chlorinated rubber, acrylic or vinyl copolymers, epoxy, polyurethanes, polyvinyl amide, fluoride and uh, polyvinyl dyne fluoride and polyamides. Now, I just want to give you an example where we use coating let us say urea retaining structures the structures concrete structures for storage of urea. Now, you know urea attacks concrete so fertilizer it is used as fertilizer and it attacks concrete. So, in such a structures it is customary to coat the surface that will come in contact with urea by epoxy coating very small thickness micron coatings of epoxies are used 
So paintings are used even in concrete structures depending upon the situations and steel protection is definitely used many a times used paints and etc. Then bracings or sheaths for cables you know for priestess concrete cables uh, sheathing cable sheathing high density polyurethane cable sheaths are used right or protection against the environment of cables there can be sheathing can be used this is the kind of thing. Bearings I mentioned to you supporting devices bridge bearings they are all elastomers they are all elastomers and then cornices cornices and other equipment many other places use PVC and polypropylene etc etc. So there is a huge use of this polymeric material in civil engineering some of the usage we like to see in uh, subsequent discussion in this part of this lecture and the next lecture obviously we will go to the usage altogether although this can form uh, this can actually one can one, one can have large discussion on the subject because there are so much of usage today of polymeric material in construction uh, may not be as as much as possibly uh, cement concrete and steel but could it take place definitely at the next place it would be there. So, but since our discussion is limited we will try to make use of another hour that we have in this module to discuss about their usage but let me introduce one material one use right away. Polymer concrete composites mainly used for repair works right and uh, uh, the, you know, you know um, one of them I will just take up today and next class, next lecture we will discuss the other ones. Now we knew that hydraulic cement binder has uh, got a inherent problem of its capillary porosity. So in early days you know uh, people were thinking how to improve this and increase the strength and one thought was replace this hydraulic cement binder completely by possibly in hardened concrete by polymer concrete you know polymeric material. So polymer concrete composites there are three varieties I have just taken up one today polymer concrete that is called polymer concrete PC stands for polymer concrete. So in this one what we do is we actually replace the hydraulic cement binder completely with what you know and, and water hydraulic cement binder and water which goes as our binding material we completely replace by polymers in hundred hardened hard hard concretes in polymer mortar you know polymer mortar concrete mortar or polymer concrete and mainly used for repair purpose. For example epoxy mortar or epoxy concrete what we have done we have got the same aggregate system we have the same aggregate system you know aggregate same aggregate they will remain plus instead of water we have actually a monomer monomer and some sort of catalyst etc catalyst etc monomer or resin 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 and catalyst etc and then this will you know polymerize and bond the aggregate so you will have instead of hydraulic cement binder now you'll have aggregates aggregate systems and aggregate system bonded with let us say bonded with polymeric material so bonded with the polymer which is formed bonded with the polymer so this is the polymer concrete this is polymer concrete you know po polymer concrete is something like this right. So this concrete is much stronger and has uh, very low curing time but it is costly it has been used extensively in repair work in some form or other but one must remember that it is costly it is costly so you cannot really use it uh, all places that you like but this has been one of the roots in fact its strength can be twice or thrice you know it is very easy to get about 70 80 MPa concrete with polymer uh, concrete but anyway 70 80 MPa concrete is also possible from the root of uh, uh, cement binder concrete as well but it has got a very low curing time so you can cure it very fast and use it in repair works mainly polymer mortars are used today in various repair works particularly um, uh, in, in uh, reinforced river corroded structures etc. So therefore they have 
they have uh, their utility in repair works because they are costly you can't use them in large quantity even though their strength is 70 you can get 70 MPA strength or 80 MPA strength very easily from other routes or even 100 MPA strength from other cheaper routes so they are not used as a bulk concrete but definitely used for repair works and quite popular for that purposes easy to use easy to use and uh, uh, quick to harden and uh, give you the right kind of uh, uh, right kind of uh, right kind of property that you desire. Processing or make, you know, make mixing is similar only thing is this uh, one has to be careful about the if you are putting it in a mold one has to be careful about the molding agent you have to have a molding agent but if you are making precast unit but that is not usually usually in repair it is just an application in some form or other. So processing is mixing etc you have to mix the aggregate the monomer and the catalyst together and that gives you the uh, polymer concrete you might use a filler material in fact usually it is the manufacturer uh, say of manufacturer would suggest you what is the proportion of the the glue which is basically a kind of a resin a hardener which will be a catalyst and how much of the aggregate of what form you should use what should the microfiller that you should use generally that is available the proportions are available from the yeah, many times from the manufacturer but it, it can easily be also determined but uh, uh, and then then you mix them similarly as you mix uh, in ordinary concrete or ordinary mortar and quite often can be used for repair purposes so that's one thing we have looked into today the other types of polymer cement polymer concrete composites will look in the next class there the two one more other class is the polymer cement concrete and that's more often used in repair work than polymer concrete well you can have an impregnation system of epoxy and several other varieties of polymeric monomer impregnation into concrete or concrete you know monomer impregnation system in concrete we will look into those usage in the next lecture. So to conclude to summarize uh, this lecture what we have really looked into today we have looked into the basics of what is polymers some definition related to them something some prop you know some characteristics which are some fundamentals which are useful for our discussion then we try to find out some properties which will be useful as far as our in, in, in usage in building is concerned and uh, then we try to see where in civil engineering they are being used and just I try to introduce you the polymer concrete in civil engineering usage we have seen the large chunk of uses goes in geotextile, uh, geo, geotechnical engineering and also in road making in the, the road construction other than buildings and other structure. So road and the geotech, geotechnical engineering applications will keep out of our discussion in the next lecture where we we'll discuss some of the usage uh, as, as much as possible within the time frame and geotechnical and uh, road usage will keep it out. So I think that uh, would answer us, brings us to the uh, conclusion of this discussion. Thank you. Uh, we will continue with this module in the next lecture. Thank you.